there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. This week, yes, really slow here. a landing gear failure on the Electra. Is it coming down at all? Or? No. Ray's crew is forced to make an emergency landing. Yeah, the only thing left is to wake the bullet and do it. Just 300 feet. Everybody's ready? Out of your hats, boy. A midwinter Monday morning. Uh, we got 31 electric trips. Give me a call. I'm just trying to cover my bases. And Mikey yeah. has struck gold. We just landed an electric contract delivering mining supplies to our ANI strip about 300 miles away. And it couldn't happen at a better time. This was supposed to be our slow month, and uh, actually it's gonna probably turn out to be our biggest month of the year. But Mikey has no idea of the danger that lies ahead. That is no strip check. This is what it looks like. The ice strip has a big crack. You can see down the middle here, there's a crack right down the middle. Like that. Captain Ray Weber scouted the strip yesterday in another airline's rugged Lockheed Hercules. The Hercules has a different uh, landing gear than we do. It's a little softer, a little more forgiving. The Electra isn't designed to land on rough surfaces. The Electra generally needs to be treated a little more gently. That way you don't end up breaking airplanes in places that you can't fix them. What I wanted was Sean to see a strip on his own and make his own assessments. Because as in 20, 50, whatever days here, he's going to be doing it. Aviation is a risky business, and uh, aviation in the north is even riskier. But this is multiple takeoffs, multiple landings on an ice strip. We're not going to a 10,000 uh, foot paved strip. We're going to a, an ice strip literally in the middle of nowhere. This will be 50 years of flying in August. Nearly 69, Ray is set to retire in a couple of months. Aviation has been a great life for me. I haven't loved every minute of it, but uh, most of it, Ray's flown for half a century. Start four one already, little four is clear. But today, Sean Barry, with just a fraction of that experience, is in the captain's seat of this Electra, known by its call sign BAQ. One's clear one already. He'll be landing the 70,000-pound turbo prop on the ice strip for the first time. Rotation. Joining mechanic Adam Smith and flight engineer Luby Lobos is DC-4 co-pilot Graham Ferguson. Uh, officially, I was like a uh, lone master. I was kind of just riding along, helping them out. You know, I was just sitting in the back and sort of paying attention to what they're all doing, because it's another part of the reason why I go along is to learn some stuff. Graham is about to learn more than he ever imagined. In fact, this crew is about to be tested like never before. We're on a roll at 06. Okay. Set fire. Set fire. As Buffalo Flight 1105 heads to an ice strip 500 kilometers away, 
The backup Electra, call sign LBA, is also on the move. We really had to get LBA in the hangar to get ready for a backup. LBA has been sitting outside all winter. Watch out there, Gene. It's even missing an engine. You're going to an ice strip. Any number of things could happen that you might be forced to use your backup airplane. And that could be much sooner than Mikey thinks. Don't see the camp in there. Nope. See it there now. It's just off to one o'clock. They don't have a great deal of maintenance equipment here to look after the runway. So. Flap 78, please. Speed checks, flaps are traveling. Gear down, line checks. Okay, gear down. That's Buffalo 1105, turn the final off this way. Still moving, is it? Yep. There, now it's stable. Landing gear, down three green. Confirm. But before they land... Uh, take your distance a little bit to your right, Sean. And then you'll be able to see the whole goddamn strip. Ray decides to circle over the strip for a quick look. You can see the poly smart there in the center of the net. Yep. That's the part to try and stay off if you can. Hellsville should be left of that polished area. Yep. Now that he sees the dangers, it's up to Sean, the rookie captain, to land the plane safely. 13th birthday. Yeah. A leap year baby born on February 29th, 1960. You could say Chuck is turning 13. Yeah. There we go. I've been looking forward to this day for 52 friggin' years, man. I'm finally a teenager. Yeah, right on. Here's your present. There you go. So you don't have to borrow James's tools anymore. <laughs> we gotta check the age on it. Oh, 13 plus, we're good. 13 plus, yeah. 13 plus. 13 plus, yeah. Right on. Right on. Happy birthday. Birthday boy gets the first piece. It's only taken him half a century to get here. Holy shit. That's good stuff. He said that he only got this cleaned up here about 20 minutes ago. Oh, really? Out at the mining camp, Ray and Sean get a better look at the ice strip. Seems a lot closer when you crack. <laughs> no big obvious cracks or anything on the ramp, so that's good. It stays cold, it'll be fine. Yeah. It looks actually pretty good now. Yeah. Uh, the, the cracks are all, they scoured it here and they flooded it and it looks pretty good. Well, I think we're just about ready to go home. Yeah. And we'll be back again in three hours. And it's like Buffalo 1105 is taxi to take off. Copy that. 
showing an unsafe light, which means the landing gear is either up and locked or down and locked. It's somewhere in between. And we're thinking, well, what's going on here? Just uh, maintain less than 190 knots or so. Yep. Break up the back on the power. One of the first things you normally do is cycle the landing gear. Well, let's try and drop them down again. Yeah, drop down. Go ahead, put you down. Expected, but the right main landing gear didn't budge. Stop. the failed landing gear. And uh, Goose Lake, it's uh, Buffalo 1105. Don't forget. We have a problem with our right main gear. The right main gear is stuck. It's not all the way up. If you can pass that on to company, uh, then we're going to have to uh, declare an emergency when we get to Illinois. Copy that. I'll pass it along. They're taking precautions now, but the real danger will come when they try to land. If that gear is not down, it's going to be not fun. No. No. So when she radio us back, she said that he had a gear stuck up. Buffalo's received a confusing message from Goose Lake. I just phoned and asked you whether they're exactly. Hi, Jessica, it's Bonnie calling you back from Buffalo Airways. Can you repeat those exact words that they called in? Okay, so they said it, was, it, it wasn't coming all the way up? The gear wasn't coming all the way up. Okay, Jessica, thank you. The right main gear, gear is stuck and it's not coming all the way up. That is what they radioed in okay. and it wasn't out. I'd like to actually talk to them. Find out what's going on. Soon, as soon as you get in contact with them, we'll leave. Just, we'll just let Chuck talk to the crew and go and go through the sequence that we have to do. Of, of the... BAQ, this is company. Still out of radio contact with Buffalo, the flight crew reviews the emergency procedure. Retract gear and make a belly landing if possible. The quick reference handbook recommends landing with all the gear up on the plane's belly. So the belly landing, you dump your fuel. We're not gonna have that much anyway, so no loose equipment. It's easy to say that I don't think we're in any danger, but I had a, a worry there that this could be a disaster in the making. In all his years of flying, Ray has never had to land a plane, let alone an Electra, with the gear up. Oh, f yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Sean has, sort of. 
last year, I did a gear up landing on the CP-140 military simulator. The simulator was for the Aurora, a military version of the Electra. When I landed the CP-140, all the gear were up, total belly landing. When the virtual plane finally skidded to a stop, the simulated landing had ripped it to pieces. Whoa! Landing gear retracts speed bucks uh, from the reference manual. I thought about it in my mind as we're coming in, you know. I did this in the simulator, but how is it going to be the same? Uh, Gavin depressurized all fuel comes off, 578 after crossing threshold, power keepers idle. Is it going to be the same? Is it going to be different? Is everything going to be okay? You know? We're going to destroy the uh, We can't get the wheels down. There's no motion on that gear at all, Sean. Buffalo's Electra, known by the call letters BAQ, is limping back to Yellowknife at 190 knots, with the right main landing gear jammed. Every pilot has gone through some sort of emergency. I've gone through maybe three before this, but not like this. No, one thing we can try, Sean, is to bounce the airplane or the gear down like a good solid thump on the left main here to maybe shake the limits. We have to get a good firm smack down. Hopefully we can shake it loose. If not, landing with that unsafe gear is gonna be where we go. But is Sean ready and willing to attempt this dangerous maneuver? Now do you want to do this? Are you on the train seats or what do you want to do here? I hesitated. Uh, I was trying to think of it, like, do I want to do this? And he looked at me, and I could see right away that he wasn't comfortable. We'll get, uh, get Graham to sit in the right seat and then you on the L train here. Okay. Basically, it came down to raise experience and raise knowledge. When you got that much experience sitting next to you, that's the guy you want to fly in the plane. In the courier seats behind the cockpit, Graham studies the Electra manual for the emergency procedure. The nose wheel steering on the aircraft is only on the captain's side, and that's a key control surface there when you're doing a landing. So they needed to switch seats. For Ray and Sean to switch seats in flight, another pilot has to take control of the plane. Next thing you know, Ray's there, he's like, we're gonna switch seats, we need you to just step in for a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes is the extent of Graham's prior experience flying the Electra. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. I didn't have a headset on while I was doing all this. Uh, there's nothing different, just hold it level. Wait. Uh, it's all trimmed out. 22,000. Yeah, control. Man. Now, this wounded bird is in the hands of a total rookie. And as soon as Ray sits down, I'm like, you're like trying to give him back control. Ready? Ready? Still adjusting all the seat belts and stuff. I'm like, all right, I guess I still have it. Uh, I get my shoulder straps done up here. Shit. I was thinking, not only am I flying Electra, but I'm flying Electra that's probably going to get wrecked and has a, has a serious problem with it. Yeah, that part was kind of surreal. We're gonna give up. We're gonna take the airplane to Yellowknife and I'm gonna pound the shit out of it, trying to shake that gear down. We might just knock it loose. I'll see, I have control. BAQ, this is company. At Buffalo, Joe, Chuck, and Mikey are still in the dark and desperate for word. They've gone into a reduced speed. BAQ, this is company. Just six months ago, a series of fatal crashes shook Yellowknife. It's 
It's been a really tough time for aviation in the North Bend. Events that happened previous has really opened my eyes. We're not uh, invincible. You know, stuff happens. So uh, today, the stuff was happening to us. EAQ, this is company. BAQ, go ahead. Okay, we're inbound, and uh, we're about 40 minutes, 45 minutes out. Our right field here is jammed in the gear doors. The other two are down. Yeah, did your problem start on a gear retraction? Did it happen on cycle? No, it happened on the first gear when we, when we came off the lake. Put your seatbelt on and give it a good G and see what happens. Uh, we actually took it right into a small with the high G and it shipped the heck out of everything and the gear never even moved. Well, we get this out, we're going to try and do the uh, touch and go and see if we can shake it loose. And if we can't pound it on the runway there, and if you got your fingers crossed, we may shake it loose. Ray will have to bring the Electra down hard and fast and then take off as soon as he hits the runway. But if he lets the right wing dip too low, the right side engines and the wing could smack the pavement, leaving the plane careening down the runway. Those two props on the right hand side are not protected by a landing gear anymore. And if you let them contact the ground when they're producing power, they will come apart, probably rupturing a hull, but likely severing controls. The fate of the plane and the souls on board is in Ray's hands. This is gonna be not fun. Copy, thanks, good luck. Yellowknife Tower, it's Buffalo 1105. BAQ circles overhead. Buffalo 1105, go ahead. We'd like to do touch and goes uh, on our one good main and a uh, left hand circuit and uh, see if, uh, if that helps anything at your convenience. Buffalo 1105, you're clear, runway 3-4. got power to all your engines there, and if you freaking dip that wing too low, you know, you, you hit a prop on that side, and it's gonna be a real ugly day. It's like, props are gonna be flying everywhere, and it, it's not gonna be good. Landing check. Landing gear. Uh, two green, two, two green. green. You are defying distant gravity going flying, and that's part of the thrill of flying, that there is a, an inherent danger that every day you overcome. Okay, here we go. Everybody's ready? Everybody's ready. Buffalo 1105 rolling out the final for touch and go, 34. Buffalo 1105, clear for 34. The airplane looked kind of odd because you could see it, you know, the one landing gear uh, stuck up. They have just enough fuel for another attempt. Round one more time. This time, Ray will slam the plane down even harder. 
Yellowknife Tower, it's Buffalo 1105, request the left hand circuit to try a second touch and go. Buffalo 1105, proceed at your discretion. And flaps 100, flaps 100, selected traveling. And here we go. We hit it even harder than the first time, and like I swear to God, that freaking prop was gonna hit. I was like, holy frick. Max power, 578, flat selected. Hey, Yellow Life Tower, Buffalo 1105. Uh, none of this works. Yeah, BAQ company. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. Sorry, you're landing the airplane. With their fuel supply dwindling, raised down to his last option. There's nothing left but to do this. He'll have to land the plane. The next one will be for real. Circling Yellowknife in an Electra with the right landing gear stuck in the wheel well. We've got the tower up and uh, they've got all the emergency equipment standing by. Ray Weaver, on the verge of retirement, is running out of fuel and options. Yeah, I'm BAQ company. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. Sorry, you're landing the airplane. We're landing the airplane, Joe. We've tried two touch and goals and there's no movement. And the only thing left is to bite the bullet and do it. And it's up to you now whether you want all four props gone or just the two on the right hand side. The million dollar question was, are we gonna belly the airplane in with no landing gear or use the two that are still working? To be honest, the engines are worth more than the airplane. Hey man, you're the captain, you're in the airplane, I'm not. I'm sitting on the desk with my feet up on it, so you're in the seat, not me. We're doing the less damage here if we put it in on the one B. I just thought you might have wanted to get your two bits worth in there. If that's your decision, go for it, guys. That's, uh, that's all right with me. My father has a tendency to freak out over small things, but when it's a big thing, you know, he's actually really calm and controlled. And Joe's not the only one. Had I indicated that I thought this was gonna be the end of the world for all of us, it would have evoked a different reaction from the crew. There was no time and no place for that. We had a job to do, and it was just a matter of doing it. If it was anybody else, would probably say just belly the airplane in. But because it was Ray and how he knows the airplane, we knew that he could take on the task of landing like that and, and possibly saving a heck load of parts. There's not much left to do with this thing. Ray has to keep the plane upright and rolling straight ahead as long as he can, slowing down so he doesn't veer off the runway at dangerously high speed. Okay, Yellow Knife Tower, Buffalo 1105, returning five mile final to 34, full stop. But whatever happens, the two right engines are going to be torn apart. The crew will have just seconds to pull the emergency handles to shut down fuel to all four engines, preventing a fire. When the right side goes down, we do three and four. And then when I lose control, we use one and two. Call 300 feet there, please, Sean. Check. This is gonna hurt. I knew it was gonna hurt the airplane. 200. It's like the final curtain, bring her down. 100. Fuel initial off, 3 4. Call for number 480. 40. 30. 20. Link melt stopping. Help me on the other on there, Sean. 10. We touched down on the left main line here. The right side of the airplane started coming down. You could feel the thump, thump, thump of the propellers hitting. He handled three and four. Pan park. Black 
two. One and two. No fire in the limb. No fire. Go get in. really surreal to see uh, VAQ out there. It looks like a wounded duck uh, laying on the side of the road. It, it didn't look natural. What the f is that piece over there? Both right engines are seriously damaged. One propeller is mangled beyond repair and the other ripped completely off. Hey, you there, bud? Mm -hmm. well, I just wanted to see the crew see the whites of their eyes and see that they're okay. And then, uh, and then we're left with an airplane. What are we gonna do? He didn't even scream. I, normally <laughs> I after any kind, of, any kind of stress, he doesn't breathe during <laughs> it. And then there's this big <laughs> at the end. Ray did a good job. He put it right where he said he would put it. And all of us got out of the airplane and walked away. Any landing you can walk away from is a good one. A hero in the twilight of his career. But Ray still can't shake the sick feeling in his gut. It's the worst incident I've had in 50 years of flying. You can't damage an airplane and, and walk away without feeling something. And, uh, you know, I've loved airplanes since I was a little kid. And, uh, you know, it, it hurts to, to damage one. You do your best. and. Uh, Sometimes it's not good enough. It's been a hell of a Monday. Now the crew from Buffalo Flight 1105 returns to the hangar in a van instead of their plane. On the brink of retirement, Ray has just performed the most difficult landing of his life. They followed procedure, they followed uh, what they were trained to do, and it was like a textbook landing in the end. I'll meet you here. <laughs> That's all I'm glad about, boys. You guys had me in tears, man. Come on, this shit. <laughs> the props at that point were just getting pretzels. We didn't hold it done. anymore. She went off the runway. Actually, we weren't going very fast. If I hadn't had my seatbelt on, I wouldn't have been thrown out of my chair. It was gentle as hell. Okay, let's go. Let's get that thing out of there. We got the whole airport closed down. We're all in here jacking off. Come on, let's go. The entire Yellowknife Airport is shut down until BAQ can be removed. They're throwing it under there too much, eh? That gear is going to want to come down, eh? They need to get the right gear down so they can tow the plane to the hangar. But prying the gear doors open is proving difficult. It's all jammed up in there, man. So Chuck comes up with a new idea. Stand back. You do that, but the gear is still stuck. That gear is jammed up in there. We're not going to get it down. We don't know what's open, but it might be just the shortage of hydraulics or what you know. Everybody's curious to see what's underneath those doors and take a look. As a pilot, you have to have faith in the airplane, faith in your maintenance and faith in yourself. If I look after my airplane, it'll look after me. In this case, we hurt the airplane. It's just <laughs> not to be done. A lot of time in that airplane. A lot of good time. Well, it's a damn good airplane. 
See you later, nerds. You hate your friend. Well, let's just get it a little bit higher, push that back, sink lock down, it. and lock it. Beside runway 34, BAQ's right landing gear is finally down. Yeah, it's down, lock. Okay. You notice that gear fell out as soon as the door's open? That's for the sequence. Chuck and the boys start bringing her home. Flight engineer Luby can barely look at his mangled baby. For me, it's uh, not just aircraft. For me, it's 14 years life, yeah, with this aircraft. Well, you can see right here, this, is, uh, this has got rubber marks on it. See? How about the inside? Yeah, look at this, right here. There's, there's raw rubber there's on raw, that. Raw, raw, raw rubber. Yeah. If this door had come up and got inside the tire, yeah. that may have been what kicked this actuator out of sequence. They'll have time to figure out exactly what went wrong, and government authorities will carry out a thorough investigation. We're waste a day of our time, man. We've got to get going. we got to get back to work. We have a million dollar customer sitting on a frozen lake. What are we going to say to him? It's a uh, got to get done job. You know, we took a, co a commitment to mobilize a camp. Uh, we'll see that commitment through. We have to do it. Now the job of getting the backup plane ready in a hurry falls to Chuck. We can do anything. We're the Mavericks of the North, man. First up, LBA needs an engine transplant. Fortunately, there's a donor right outside the hangar door. We had to take an engine off BAQ to put on LBA. Hold it, hold it. Hold it. You got to come up. Good, keep coming in straight. Oh, oh. Slow down, boys. Great. We don't want her to go through the wing. We want to attach her to the wing. Come on in. Over the next two days, the mechanics work to get LBA ready. All hands on deck. Okay. Pull off the tire, do the bearings, might as well do the whole thing. Well, the mechanics got 48 hours around the clock, pushing hard, stress. When I get here at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, this thing's going to be running. Goddamn close. It's, it's going to be outside. It's <laughs> running. <laughs> well. But getting the backup Electra up and running is only part of the equation. I was quite worried about rating the crew. Um, I didn't know how they were doing. I so folks are on getting the airplane ready to go that uh, I was just hoping that they can get past what happened and, and get back to work. Uh, are you going to be up to go flying tomorrow? Uh, well, they want a ground run, but I think if everything works out there, they're probably going to want us to load it up and go. You're going to be up to that? Probably good for all to see it back there. Should you fall off the, yeah, fall off the horse, she gets back on it right in. Finally, after two days in the hangar, the maintenance on the backup Electra is done. Now, they'll find out if the plane and the crew are good to go. They got the new engine on. It's about ready to go for a ground run, and uh, fingers crossed, because if it goes good, put the crew in her, go for a flight, and we're back at work.
LBA is running, we're all happy. It's going on its first trip. Then, the pilots cut the engine. That's not good. It felt like deja vu, you know, the river shuttle and then the whole Christmas fiasco was uh, not fun times. Buffalo can't afford another delay. The crew is ready to get back in action, but now the backup elector itself seems to be shaking with fear. Get out and start that APU. I want you to spin that engine over. On the Buffalo ramp, the backup electorate is set to save a million dollar contract. I don't really feel anything. But a mechanical mystery on the newly installed number four engine has put the job in jeopardy. On the initial run up, we got word from the crew that they're encountering a uh, vibration. Still there? Yep. Quite pronounced. It didn't happen until after we pulled the starter cut out. About 80, somewhere, probably about 8,700 RPM. Chucky attacked it right away and was trying to figure out uh, what could be causing the problem. Okay, there's something loose here, man. That's loose. There's one thing that's going to vibrate. Listen to this. Hear that? Is the clamp loose? Yeah, the other clamp that holds the pipe. That's what it is. It's one small detail the mechanics missed during the engine transfer. I got her. Look at that. Hey. Hey. Hey, Baba. No more knocky knocky noise. Okay, I'm gonna close the thing here. This shit's coming to a brutal end. back in the job. So we lost Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday we're flying again. I want to get these out of here. Yeah, yeah, get them out of here. I'm quite proud of everybody. The getter done attitude got her done. And now we're back to work. At 800, transponder. Radar is off. Transponder is T-A-R-A. 0015, clear takeoff for 3 4 0015, clear takeoff 34 Thank you. 60, check, my yoke, 80, 81, rotate. Positive rate, good job. Oh, feels good, as it should. 